Um, Nipsey Hussle, when I first made a song with Nipsey Hussle, it was the first time in my career that I felt I was on. And when I say on, as an artist, you always have these on moments. You know what I mean? You meet Peter Schwartz, you think you on. You just left the, 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 the room, you're like, I'm on. You, met, you meet uh, uh, Ed, he's, he's Rihanna's lawyer. You're on, I'm, I'm working with Rihanna's lawyer, I'm on. So you always have these on moments. And I had that on moment when I met Nipsey because he was popping to me and he co-signed me and I felt like this was it. So I dropped out of school. I dropped out of school, I met French Montana. I was, I was, I, I was, I was uh, looking at French Montana's mixtapes. I was putting uh, the mac and cheese covers in the CDs, just hanging out in the studio. And I was working on this tape that I was gonna drop. And, and I said, French is on it, Nipsey's on it. This is gonna get me the biggest deal and I'm gonna be lit. So I do the mixtape, I put it out. And I was a flop. <laughs> I failed. It was, the, it was the biggest fail. I failed. I was just like, damn. I thought this was going to get me the deal, and it didn't get me the deal, guys. I recorded this, this in 2000. I dropped it in like 2010 or 11. It flopped. My parents are super strict. They're like super Albanian, and they're like, you need to get out the house. You either get, out, get a job or you can't live here. You got to bring money. And I ended up dipping. Um, my relationship with Mike and Dave, who invested on that CD, kind of, we kind of like, they started, they went back to school and started doing their own thing and I would keep in touch with them. But I had to figure my life out. I had to figure out something for me. So I hit the streets in New York City selling that CD that I made. And I would sell it, I'd sleep in Wendy's, I met my friend Scott Andrews, I'd go to New Jersey, and I'd be in New York City streets trying to get this deal with this CD. And I thought to myself, it's gonna happen, you know what I mean? And then I found out while sleeping in the streets of, uh, in Soho, one night, I, I'm just chilling there, and I see Kanye walking. And I start following Kanye to his apartment. <laughs> And I waited outside of Kanye's house for like a year and a half, almost two years. If you go on Google and you Google Gashi Kanye, <laughs> you can see a picture of Kanye West coming up to me saying, I see you every single day. Give me a CD. And Kanye West takes a CD from me. And you see that picture of him giving me a pound after he took my CD. And it was another on moment. I thought Kanye was going to grab my CD, listen to it, and I was going to be the fucking man. I was going to be on. Uh, Kanye grabbed the CD, no call, no nothing. I'm still bum. And my mother called me, and she was like, yo, I lost my job. I need help. And you need to find a way to go back to school. So she was going to make me sign to Kingsborough. You guys know it's a community college, super trash. And I was like, yo, I'm not trying to go there, but everybody said the girls were pretty. So I was like, all right, cool. So what, what, I'll go to community college for a little bit just to make my parents happy. Long story short, man, I took my last check that I was, where I was, uh, so I got a job at Billabong where my mom needed help. And I took that last check. I was working at Billabong, and like I said, the mentality of Gashi is do everything the best you can do it. I had a job there for like a month. They were trying to make me management, manager. You know what I'm saying? That's how much board shorts I was selling for these idiots. <laughs> and I realized when I was making, uh, the money I was making for these people, how much money I was making for them, I was like, damn, bro, like, they got me busting my ass selling these shorts for this company and they don't even pay me that much. So I wake up every day working for another man's dream of selling board shorts, which is the weakest shit ever. So I, while this man is probably in Australia right now eating fucking cheesecake or whatever he's doing, I'm over here busting my ass while this man is chilling with kangaroos. So. 
I realized I need to get the fuck out of here. And I started slacking. And um, the manager, uh, Josh, comes up to me and he goes, hey, man, you've been slacking. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, the board shorts are not selling. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I, like, I'm tired of selling them, fam. I'm like, I'm really tired of selling these motherfuckers. On top of that, y'all not even giving me free shorts. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck you want me to do? Keep selling these shorts for you? And he's like, you fired. And I said, thank you. So he fired me, and I took the last check, and the Jordan 3s were coming out. And I love the Jordan 3s. Like, that's how you know I'm from New York. I'd rather look like money than have money. Uh, the Jordan 3s were coming out, and I was going to buy the Jordan 3s, but I said, nah, fuck that. I took the last check, and I recorded the song called Who Made Me. That song, Who Made Me, we put it out. I, got, I linked up with Mike and Dave. We put it out again. Mike was like, you know what? I'm going to email every blog until they post it. Half of every company blocked me on Twitter because I would con con constantly tweet them to post my shit. And um, before you know it, man, I was driving with my mother. She had a night shift Sunday, and I was supposed to go register for school. I ain't tell nobody I was going to go to Kingsboro. And I was so ashamed of it. I was holding I ain't tell nobody. And... Uh, Driving with my mom that Sunday night, man. Peter Rosenberg from Hot 97 played my record, man. Okay. Played Who Made Me. And I pulled over, and I started bawling. I started crying. And I looked at my mother, and I said, Mom, if you playing a fucking game on me right now, this is not the time. <laughs> so I started changing the stations to see if she was fucking with me. And it was on the fucking radio. Peter Rosenberg played it, and... Who Made Me was the last song I recorded before I was going to drop out. And it made the radio. And the next morning, she woke me up like, are you ready to go to Kingsborough? I was like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> that was a sign. I'm not going back to school. You are crazy. So I dropped out again. I didn't go back. Uh, so I didn't go back to school. And I continued to do music. And I uh, was going through a breakdown where... I did some drugs that I'm not happy of, but I had anxiety and I was going through a breakdown where, mental breakdown where, um, see, in families, a lot of times, the parents compare kids to the other sisters and brothers' kids. And we say, what is she doing? Because my daughter just got into Harvard. Even if that bitch didn't go to Harvard, they just bragging. Because that's what family do, that's what family does. They compare the kid to the other kid, and you know me being such a successful student and having a full scholarship, and then dropping out and playing Tony Hawk, jerking off my room, was not what they was not what they expected of me. You know what I mean? I was a failure. I was eating popcorn with hot sauce in my room. I did not want to see nobody. I was trapped in, miserable. And anyone that saw me. I would lie and say, oh, hey, I'm visiting from college because I didn't want them to know I dropped out. So I would make music. Again, I started making music, and my sister would give me money. That's why my sister is forever in my heart. I love her to death. That's my best friend. She would give me money and be like, here's $100. Go record a song. Go record a song. It was $100 for one hour in Williamsburg. There was this dude... I think he was like uh, from Thailand or something. I don't know. His name was Kim. And he said, $100 an hour. And he would always call. Every time I call him, I'm like, hey, Kim, how you doing? Are you free today? He'd be like, send a deposit. <laughs> and it'd be the first thing he'd say. And I'd be like, all right, cool. So, <laughs> so uh, we would send a deposit in. And my sister would help me. And um, every now and then, Mike Dave would help me. And... Um, I, I would go there and I would record music. My, and uh, before you know it, guys, I got my call. I got my call. I made a, room, a song called Room 4, shot the video for it. And uh, I want to give a big shout out to a friend that we kind of stopped talking. And uh, his name is Johnny Quest. And I want to give a big shout out to Johnny Quest. You're probably watching this. Um, I just want to say thank you, man. You know, um, I had a good friend named Johnny Quest. Uh, he was he was Jamaican from Canarsie, 
and he's helped me he's helped me with my videos so much we just kind of fell apart at like a weird part of my career and we shoot these videos together and you know now I'm in LA and I'm shooting videos for two hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollars and I swear to God Johnny if you watching this these people don't know as much as you do man I hope you continue doing what you do I know we stopped talking but like I sit there, every time I edit a video, I think about what we did. We shot a video called Room 4, and I got a call from this guy named Jason Flom, who ended up giving me my first record deal to Lava Records. Now, again, another I'm on moment. I got my deal. This guy signed Katy Perry. He signed Lord. This man is the motherfucking man. You know, I walked into this shit. I see plaques. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. So I signed my fucking deal, guys. I finally signed my record deal. I'm excited. I told my mom, please don't switch up on me. I'm about to make all this money. <laughs> the boy signed for $5,000. <laughs> In my product bag right now, I got 50 Gs. I signed for $5,000, and I was excited as if, as if my life changed. It was the worst decision I've ever made. Shout out to Jason Flom. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm not mad at you. I love you. Because everyone that's ever did me right or did me wrong in my life, I love them. Because I learned lessons. Every time I took an L, I learned my lesson. It was never bad blood. I was always so emotional. I was always so angry. Because I'm pointing fingers at everyone for, for me not being where I want to be. But the reality of it, it's my fault. I signed that deal. I said I was lit. I went to Aspen, and everybody looked at me like a unicorn because I didn't know how to snowboard. But he brought me to Aspen, and I thought I was on. I signed that deal. I thought I was going to be dating Katy Perry. And none of that stuff happened, you know? Um, long story short, if you're an artist in this building right now, the worst thing to do when you sign a deal is take a picture and post it on Instagram. It's the worst thing. The advice for me to you is don't ever post that you signed a deal. Because I ended up posting, I signed a deal, but my mom was still waking me up in the morning saying, go get milk. So I posted, I signed my deal, but I was still in the hood, man. I was still in the hood and nothing was moving for me. So I'd go to the grocery stores. They're like, yo, you just posted, you got a deal. Fuck are you doing here? I'm like, I signed for like five G's, fam. That shit just went on like two jeans and a jacket. And the guy that signed me, yeah, he never called me. I haven't spoken to him yet. So I signed a deal, and the person I signed to never speak to me. I barely speak to him. I see him once, like, every three months. And he pays for dinner, and he looks like he's, like, stressing to pay for it. And I'm over here like, damn, I messed up. So now, guys, remember, when someone's offering you a deal, the best thing to do is have your lawyer. I did not have a great lawyer at the time. I don't want to say his name. Um... But at the time, I had a lawyer who claimed to care about me, but his intentions were not the best intentions for me. You know what I'm saying? At the time, I needed the Ed Spiro. I mean, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I needed the Ed at the time, and, and, and I didn't have a lawyer, and I just signed without reading, and it was the worst decision I've ever made. I ended up signing for like eight albums for five Gs. And now I'm broke. People seen I posted it. Everyone in the hood is like, yo, you made it. But I'm still broke. And I'm putting quarters together to get, to get some Chipotle. And it's all messed up. I'm going down. And um, I was really depressed, guys. I was really depressed. And, and if you're an artist or a producer in here, you know, I, I started my own record label. And I would never pull that on anyone. You know what I mean? No matter how much money I have, even if I didn't have no money, anyone I sign, I'm going to push them as much as I push myself. You know what I mean? And if you ever have, if you ever have a deal soon, which you will, I'm not going to say if you ever, you will. If you work hard, you'll get there. If you ever have a deal, make sure you have a great lawyer, man. That's, the, that's another advice I have, man. Having a great lawyer is super important. Because it's it, it it that makes sure you safe, and that's something I didn't care about at the time, and I ended up signing pretty a, a lot of shitty deals that thank God I'm out of today. Um, so I signed that deal, and if you guys wondering how I got out that deal, 
my girlfriend at the time, my ex-girlfriend, she invited me to a club. I hate clubs. It's crazy that I signed a residency in Vegas because I hate clubs. It's so stupid. Like People just go there and they're sweating and they all got their phones up. And then as soon as the phone's down, they're not excited anymore. They're only going, yeah. When the phone's up and when the phone's down, it's back to just drinking and being miserable. It's trash. I don't like it. And every, it's always sweaty and hot. It feels like you walked in somebody's asshole. I, don't, I hate clubs. It's trash. So I was like, fuck it. Something told me to go to the club that day. So I went to the club and I ran into a kid. I don't want to say his name. He was an Albanian artist. He was like, yo, I'm going to be on... Uh, I'm gonna be on um, he said, I'm going to be on uh, performing on Dancing with the Stars. Now, I don't know too much about that shit, but I know my mom watched that shit. So I was like, you know what? It should be lit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so this should be a big deal. So uh, I go home, and the kid wasn't fucking lying. He was on Dancing with the Stars singing. I thought I was dreaming. I'm literally sitting, eating a box of Apple Jacks. And I'm just sitting there like, holy shit, this kid's on Dancing with the Stars. This is a big fucking deal. I'm like, yo, ma, you watch Dancing with the Stars? She goes, yeah, why? I'm like, you know this kid? She's like, no. I was like, he's Dancing with the Stars. She goes, yeah, he's successful, unlike you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I, I got to call this kid. So I looked at my phone, and I had his number. He stored it in my phone. So I called the kid. I'm like, yo, 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 you really on this with the stars, man? Congrats. And he's like, I told you. I was like, man, I ain't believe you, man. I was having a bad night. And uh, before you know it, man, I was like, do you want a record deal? And he said, yeah. I said, I got the guy. He going to sign you. So I hit up this guy who I was signed to and told him, sign this kid and let me out of my deal. So I got that kid the deal, and I reversed it and got out mine. See, everyone in this room, when you're angry, you make the worst decisions. See, I wanted to go into that label, tear the plaques down, say, fuck you, go crazy, fuck everybody, you guys ruined my life. It's the first thing I wanted to do. It's the worst decision I could have made. If I did that, I would have been arrested. I would have been a bum. I would have been everything my parents thought I was. You know? But I didn't. I started to think like Jay-Z. I started to think like these people that I look up to. And I said, you know what? I got out of my deal. 